All right, guys, look, you've done brilliantly this season to even get this close to winning the title, but we've got a chance with two games left. They're both away, and the first one's in Perth. So just please make sure you just adjust your bodies to the clock over there, because it's like, it shouldn't be Australia, it's like South Africa. So, like, just make sure these next two weeks, get your body acclimatised for Perth, even if it means you have to start training at, like, 3 a.m. or whatever, and then Western Sydney Wanderers. We could do a Western Sydney Wanderers here. We could win the title in our first season, and we fresh them the snake 3 nil back here. So we know we can beat them, win these two games. We'll need a favour from Redcliffe and Wellington, which is unlikely, but you never know. And we might be able to win the league in our first season. Come on, fellas, let's go. Party in the streets and the city's on fire. Hello everyone and welcome to episode number 10 of the New Zealand Builder Nation with both the All Whites on the international stage and AFC Auckland in the A-League and coming up today it's the end of the first season with the latter of those teams and we've got a chance of lifting the title at the end of this season. We need to win both our games today though, first up away at the Perth Glory and then also away when we take on the team currently joint with us on points in Western Sydney Wanderers. So if you're looking forward to that coming up, in today's episode as well as the end of season review and also we should pick our team for the upcoming OFC Nations Cup with the All Whites and do remember to go down below leave a thumbs up on the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well it is greatly appreciated but thankfully not much has happened off the back of the end of today's episode where we took on Sydney FC and the Wellington Phoenix need to win both those games to keep our title hopes alive. Thankfully, that is what happened. If you missed that one, I'll leave a link to it over in the top right corner. No injuries going into these games and no suspensions either, which is very nice, at least in terms of going into the first game in today's episode where we do take on the Perth Glory. That should be a very winnable game for us, especially considering when we took these guys on earlier this season. We bet them 4-0 at Mount Smart. Gwavin Torming with a hat-trick and Big Gianni Bazookas also picked up a goal. Ollie Sale, the New Zealand goalkeeper at the Perth Glory, he had a shocker. And to be fair, based on our home performance when we took on the Western Sydney Wanderers, we'd also like to think that's quite a winnable game for us as well, albeit away from home and a team who could still have a sneaky chance of lifting the title. That one might be a bit trickier, seeing as those guys are in third on the table just below us because of their goal differential. But two wins in today's episode might be enough for us to lift the title. But the Central Coast Mariners are currently on top by two points. And to be fair, do have a pretty kind run home. They've just lifted the Asian Confederations Cup, winning the final 3-0 over Riffa. They are a team from Bahrain, so you'd expect them to pick up that trophy. But they've got Red Cliff away. Red Cliff a team who it looks like are going down to the second tier for next season of the save. And then they take on the Phoenix, who have been okay of late, but of course are our rival club. Don't really expect them to give us a helping hand, especially in the form the Central Coast have been in this season. To be fair, they beat us both times we played them, so it's probably deserved if they do lift the league title over us in this first season, and to be fair, we still have a lot of time to go above them in terms of the A-League, but you'd back the Central Coast Mariners to pick up wins in those last two games and get the job done, but hopefully one of Redcliffe or the Phoenix can give us a helping hand, and then we just need to stay above Western Sydney Wanderers, obviously winning that second game of today's episode would be very useful in doing that, and before then, they also take on the Phoenix, so the Phoenix have a big hand to play in today's episode, our New Zealand rivals from down in Wellington. But hopefully first up, we can beat the Perth Glory, the team who the Phoenix usually take on in the distance derby. To be fair, that might be us these days. We can actually check to see who's further away from Perth between us and the Phoenix. But seeing as both these games today are quite big, considering we could lift our first A-League title in our first season. The only other team who have done that, ironically, are the Western Sydney Wanderers, but no bus trips today. We'll save a couple up for the second season of the save. We're going to get straight into the action and hopefully keep our total hopes alive by beating Perth. 
And here are the team sheets for the first game of today's episode. Must win for us. Pretty much Perth coming to this one in some pretty average form. And they are going with a 4-3-3, even though this is away from home. And they're quite different in terms to Auckland and Perth, time difference-wise. Still like to think this is a game where you can win just one change from yesterday's episode. It's an expected one. Mitchell comes back in from his suspension for Havelis. But apart from that, the same team that got the job done in yesterday's episode might be a slight colour clash here. We're in the black in the purple but hopefully we can pick up a win and keep the pressure on the central coast and western sydney and an early highlight here in this one seven minutes gone it's a throw in here in our favor now it's oxborough who is on the ball nice one over the top there for tormine a big push in the back there from one of the perf defenders with a long name i think that's kurt lumbus he gives away a penalty the referee is checking with var but that did look pretty clear cut and Gravine Tormine off the back of a hat trick the last time he took on Perth at Mount Smart. Early chance here to beat Ollie Sale in goal yet again. He sends him the wrong way, puts that one top right corner. It's a brilliant start. We go one the lap early and he picks up his 21st goal of the season. Definitely on track to be the player of the season here at AFC Auckland. But that's a very well taken penalty. Good start for us here. It's a bit of a soft one, but we take a 1-0 lead. And just about to make our way into half time in this game so far, just that one highlight penalty. Interesting to see Central Coast still being held by the Red Cliff Wave. So we could actually make some ground up here on the Central Coast, but that was a pretty quiet first half. Just that penalty, which was put away by Gwivine Tormine. A couple of yellow cards out there, though. One to Nick Sullivan. He's probably going to be suspended for our last game of the season because that's, that's not ideal. And if we bring on Tower Tamer. And if he picks up a yellow card, he would also be suspended. So we're going to run on Louis Toomey instead just to make sure that hopefully someone who can play in the DM role will be okay for that final game of the season. Also, Havelis for Mitchell on a yellow card and Sinclair struggling. Mohamed Ahitaran can come on for him. So a couple of changes there at halftime, seeing as we're not quite at our best, but thankfully 1-0 in front thanks to that early penalty. And only a couple of minutes into the second half, an update from the Central Coast Redcliffe Waves game. Unfortunately, Marco Tullio has scored a goal for so the Central Coast. They will keep their gap over us on the top of the A-League. But now Michael Neal out there struggling on a 6.4 as we do hit the hour mark. We'll bring on Nathan Lowe in his place. Still just that one highlight, that one penalty to put us 1-0 in front. And with about 20 minutes left in this game, Gianni Bazookas on a 6.4. So I think coming up here we'll take him off for Hassan Jello, but also Central Coast. Now starting to pull away with a 2-0 lead. So unfortunately, it doesn't look like the Waves are going to help us out. It might be all down to the Wellington Phoenix on the final day of the season. But thankfully, it's a quiet game off the back of that early penalty. So we're still 1-0 up. And just about to make our way now into the last 10 minutes of this game. And it has been a very quiet one. Just that one highlight, that penalty, which we did tuck away. So we are going to try and time waste here. Seeing as it doesn't look like we're up to too much. And off the back of doing that, it's a throw in here. In our favour inside the final third. Tormine and Lobo they link up a couple of times. Tormine gets taken out there. It was apparently the ball. But thankfully Perth clear it. And we do keep it. Now Callan Elliott does start to get in behind. Down that right hand side. Squares that one nicely for Mohamed Ahitaran. But unfortunately that shot just misses that bottom left corner. So we are still only 1-0 up. And now we're down the other end here. For a highlight to the Perth glory. They loop that one into the back of the net through Bruce Kamal. And that could be a dagger blow. With only a couple of minutes left in this game. They make it one all. We really needed to put these guys away a bit more earlier. But to be fair this has been a game of very few highlights. As you have seen or not seen. But unfortunately that header enough loop on it. To get past Marinovic off the back of that. We are going to go full out attack our wingbacks. They can go on to attack. We'll go to an attacking mentality. Also, Chuck Toomey, who's also picked up a yellow card, on to support, be more expressive, and also up our tempo and play a little bit wider as well. We might even go wider than that narrow. Also, try and distribute quickly instead of slow the pace down. And we might also shift to a higher line. But I think that's about all we can do. In fact, also, Stefan Marinovic on attack instead of defend. And we'll see if those changes can get us back into this game in the last five minutes. I say back into this game, give us a much needed winner. Otherwise, I think it might be too much to do on the final day of the season, seeing as Central Coast, they are beating 
the Red Cliff waves, but thankfully interception there and a chance for us to do something in the first minute of four of added time. It's Ihatarin on the ball down this right-hand side. Now Callan Elliott, who's had a brilliant season, starts to make his way forward, picks out Ihatarin, who's inside the box, tries to square it, it gets dealt with. Thankfully going to win that ball back off the clearance though through Toomey Elliott, starts to make his way inside the box, squares that one for Jallo. He gets brought down by Muir. And it might be yet another penalty. And this could be a massive one. Gavin Tormine might be looking for a double from the spot. He is. This would be a very fortunate way to win this game so far. Done pretty much nothing from open play. Gavin Tormine to keep our title hopes alive. We'll bury that one bottom left corner. He makes it 2-1 off the back of that. We're going to go back to what we usually do. And back to our time-wasty ways that we were doing with 10 minutes to go of this game, but Gwebeen Tormin stepping up nicely from the penalty spot in this one, will lower the tempo, time waste frequently, be more disciplined, also go back to that standard defensive line and tell our goalkeepers to slow the pace down as well, but Gwebeen Tormin has been massive for us here this season, continues to be so, slots that one away, much like he did in the first half at this time, goes low and bottom left, instead of top left like he did in the first half, Gives us a 2-1 lead. Hopefully that is all the highlights. And that should keep us in a title fight on the final day of the season. I think it will. Thankfully, the Perth Glory give away two penalties at home. And Gwen Tormin makes the most of it. They grabbed a goal back late there through Kamal. Which made things a bit interesting. Very interesting, in fact, in those last couple of minutes. But thankfully, we went more attacking and it kind of paid off, won't say it did, because we didn't do too much there that we saw from open play, but stats-wise, I think we deserved that. Thankfully, we got the win, and that should mean we have a chance on the final day of the season, but now we are relying on the Wellington Phoenix to take some points off of the Central Coast Mariners, and even then, Golder French all these days could be pretty tight as they were beating the Red Cliff Waves 3-0 when we were getting to the late stages of our game. That was the final score. Goal differential is identical. So we need to win. We need the Central Coast to be held to a draw by the Phoenix. And also, Western Sydney could still be in this, depending on how they get on when they play their game against the Knicks as well. We'll come back shortly and outline what we need to happen on that final day of the season. And we are back having gone for two weeks off the back of that relieving win there over the Perth Glory. As I said, certainly not at our best, but thankfully two penalties and Gwaveen Tormine put them away. It is now on 22 goals for this season at AFC Auckland. Obviously, the Central Coast Mariners, they picked up that 3-0 win to keep themselves on top of the A-League. That goal differential, exactly the same as ours. But the following day, did rule out Western Sydney Wanderers from featuring in the title fight. The Wellington Phoenix held them to a free-all draw at Sky Stadium. It does still mean that Western Sydney, if they beat us, could go above us, but they've got no chance of catching the Central Coast Mariners. It is a shootout now between us and them. We take on Western Sydney. As you saw earlier, a team we beat 3-0 at Mount Smart earlier this season. Marco Rudan, still a bit salty about that based on these pre-match comments that he did make saying that we're a bit boring. Yeah, 3-0, Marco. Suck on that, you snake. But we need a favour here from the Wellington Phoenix as they take on the Central Coast Mariners, who are in red-hot form. Hopefully, they find a way to do something there over in Gosford. But to be fair, as I said earlier, Central Coast beat us both times this season. Don't think we can complain if they get the job done. And things for us in this game made a little bit more difficult by the suspensions that we did pick up through yellow cards in that first game of today's episode. As we said, when we took him off at halftime, Nick Sullivan indeed suspended off the back of that yellow card, but also Louis Toomey, he got suspended as well. So thankfully we did that, because it does mean that Taylor Tamer can play as the DM. He's a bit more natural there, but that will be the only change to our team for this big game, the second one of today's episode. It does mean Thomas Foster and Brock Bart come up from our under-19s, a few youth and take players who actually can now play for our first team so that Stephen Havales can cover as the defensive midfield backup. So a bit of a shuffled up bench for this one, but hopefully we can still find a way here to get the job done at the Western Sydney Wanderers who come into this one in a little bit of a poor patch of form. It's fair to say lost to Redcliffe before that draw against the Phoenix. Hopefully the Phoenix can do the same when they take on the Central Coast. 
but hopefully we can beat these guys at the Combank Stadium, rub the snake's nose in it, and lift the A-League title if the Phoenix can do us a favour. We'll come back shortly and hopefully pick up the A-League in our first season in front of the fans of the only team to have done it before. And here are the team sheets for this final day of the season, in particular the Western Sydney Wanderers. Five at the back, they are missing quite a good left back, but young Cody Phoenix is a pretty promising New Zealander who will start there instead, a player that we offered a contract to, but he wanted to be a star player and was not that good. You saw our changes before, Taylor Tamer in the DM role and a couple of youth intake players on the bench. We need that win and we need the Phoenix to hold the Central Coast to a draw. And no highlights so far in this game, to be fair, it has been Western Sydney Wanderers so far, who have been on the front foot, but an update, Central Coast 1-0 up early, thanks to a goal through Kual, not ideal Wellington. And now about halfway through the first half of Central Coast 2-0 up, Kual has got a double, Wellington not helping us out. Yeah. And this won't help either Gianni Bazookas, forced from the field with an injury, Hassan Jello will come on for him so far. Things not going our way, Millhouse. And it gets even worse 10 minutes shy of half time. Now the Central Coast make it 3-0. I think we've got no chance here of picking up the A-League title, albeit now Oscar Zavada does pull one back, but it still looks like a bit too much of a mountain to climb there for the Phoenix, but eventually first highlight of this game, the 45-minute mark, good chance there from a corner for the Wanderers. Thankfully, they put that one just wide, and now we're down the other end for a front of our own. Thankfully, we keep that despite the efforts of young Cody Phoenix, a player certainly on the radar for the national team, but probably just yet not quite good enough. Now, nice through ball there for Hassan Jallo. Tucks that one away past Thomas. Did look a bit too good to be true. We're just waiting here for an offside check. Albeit the players are celebrating the goals awarded. We make it 1-0. We're doing what we need to do. We just need our rivals, the Phoenix, to help us. Not looking good so far, but Jello indeed being played on there by that defender. Just trying to figure out who that is once I can click on him. It was Kliz B, but that's a brilliant goal just before halftime for us. We make it 1-0. And to be fair, up until then, Western Sydney have been on the front foot. A couple of players for us are on yellow cards. We might play things safe and take them off, despite the fact one of them is our player of the season. The other was the player who set up that first goal. Both players down our left-hand side, so it does mean Lobo at left-back. That one's pretty obvious, but I think Ihataran can come on at left-wing. It does mean no right-wing cover for Jack Henry Sinclair, but hopefully he can perform well and last the rest of this one. But we're doing our job, albeit it would be nice if we can grab a cushion goal. Just need the Phoenix to mount a big comeback as they're free one down at the Central Coast. And unfortunately, it doesn't look like that comeback is going to happen. It was actually 4-1 at halftime in that Central Coast game. We'll be at a chance for us here to make it 2-0. Very good save that from Thomas in goal. And then it does get cleared away. No, Lobo with a shot. That one going just wide. But a good early chance for us there to make it 2-0 in the second half. But unfortunately, don't think it's going to matter. Central Coast are fresh in the Phoenix. But now Hataran gets in behind here at the 52 minute mark, tries to square this one, but it goes all the way back to Lobo, over there to Callan Elliott, what will he do, takes on the shot, from a tight angle, Thomas there, with a really good save, thought that he might try and square that one, for whoever that was for us, inside the box, it might have been someone, like Stefan Melt, but it does mean, we have a corner looking to make this 2-0, and Winston Reid, will hit the post, we are peppering here, the Wanderers goal, but unfortunately, can't quite make it 2-0, Albeit now a free kick here to Mitch Oxborough. Lots of highlights early in the second half. He tries to put that one in the bottom left corner. It goes just wide. Still only one left. The Phoenix are still three goals behind. As I said, doesn't look like that's going to go our way. The Central Coast are looking like they will be the A-League champions for back-to-back -back seasons. But now it's Western Sydney who do have the ball. Borello here does get in behind. And that one comes off the post. Big chance there for them to grab an equaliser, but thankfully, the woodwork comes to our rescue, albeit lots of highlights in this little spell here, it's now thrown to the Wanderers, Phoenix is on the ball, now Hendrix goes back to Clisby, and now Phoenix of all the player names, on a day like this, good chance there for Ninkovic, thankfully, that one goes just over the bar, I'll catch my breath, still, we only won the lap, and in fact, I won't catch my breath, only a few minutes off the back of that chance, to the Wanderers, Central Coast make it 5-1, 
I think our title chances are officially up in smoke. And now it's a corner here for the Wanderers just with 20 minutes to go. We hit that one clear, Borello. That shot gets blocked. It falls very kindly for Ninkovic who had that chance earlier with that header which went over the bar. This time he puts it away. That's a bit unfortunate. Had some chances there to clear it away. But unfortunately the ball did fall to Western Sydney a couple of times. That might have even been blocked by one of their own players. But Ninkovic puts that one away. It's a good finish. Top right corner. It's one all. And that does mean now we need to pick up a goal. And also the Phoenix need to mount a ridiculous comeback. Just going to check here on what we can do, if anything, with Jake Henry Sinclair on a 6.4. Don't think we can do anything because Ihataran has already come on for Tormine. So we might have to leave things as they are with about 15 minutes left in this game. And now being locked up at one all. And shortly off the back of that equaliser to the Wanderers, now it's a throw for them, albeit deep inside of their own half. Winston Reid has dropped down to a 6.4, so we might be able to bring on Havelis for him shortly, just to see if that will help us out. Winston Reid certainly better in the first half of the season than the second half. Hopefully that is not his age catching up with him, considering he will be here for next season. But Sinclair on the ball. Now Cullen Elliott, can we find a way here to grab a goal? To put us back in front. Nice ball there for Ihataran. Gets his head on the end of that one. Decent chance. But unfortunately we way out. And it goes just wide. Still one all. Central Coast still 5-1 up. And before this corner can take place. We will make that sub. Havali is coming on for the struggling Winston Reid. And I think that's all we need to do for now. Save up that last stoppage. And that last sub just in case. One more injury. We will swap Havali with Mitchell like we were doing earlier this season when Reed was out with those injuries. It's a corner here for the Wanderers and good clearance off the line there from Ihataran. So a good chance there for them to pinch this one and go above us on the final day of the season. But I think that should be it for this highlight. We'll just see if we can stop it. Indeed we do through Nathan Loba. But now inside the last 10 minutes of this game, I think it's time for us to go a bit more attacking with our wingbacks like we did late in that Perth Glory game as we search for a winning goal. Not that it looks like it's going to make too much difference in the title race. And about to make our way now into the last five minutes of this game. Unfortunately, the Phoenix are still 5-1 behind. So the best that we can do is finish second. And to be fair, a draw will get that job done. They pump that one deep Do the Wanderers. Thankfully, win that one in the air. Ihataran links up nicely there with Stavau Malk. Bit of a foot in there, but thankfully forced to Jello. Now a tamer, but good work there from Hendricks. And a chance here for Western Sydney to hit us on the counter-attack. And it is there. Not too sure who that is actually, but it goes back to Phoenix down that left-hand side. Now Bradonte makes his way through the middle. Goes out there to the right back in Peleus. He will float this one into the mixer. It gets headed there. Thankfully, that one goes just over the bar. Still one all. So for now, looks like we're going to be staying in second spot for our first season in the A-League. Lots of players now are down Two red hearts, but we don't have very good options to come on for those players. I think we'll take off here. Cullen Elliott, Stefan Negro can come on for him on that 6.5. We'll see if we can get some spark from our right back. But it does look like the Central Coast Mariners will be champions. Hopefully, we can just hold on here and pick up second place. Indeed, that's what's happened, unfortunately. Couldn't quite pick up a win on that final day of the season. Held to a draw there. By the Wanderers, but to be fair, that was a pretty even game. We only slightly edged things in most stats, but unfortunately could not get the job done. And even then, wouldn't have mattered because the Central Coast, they absolutely pumped the Wellington Phoenix in the end by five goals to two. So it does mean we finished second in our first season in the A-League still. That is a very good job. Adelaide United with to play Canberra in a relegation playoff and Redcliffe and Darwin goes straight down to the second division. But unfortunately, it's still a pretty good first season. But we go close, but not quite close enough. We finish second behind the Central Coast Mariners. And there is the confirmation the Central Coast Mariners do get crowned champions off the back of their 5-2 demolition job of our rivals in the Wellington Phoenix. That one or draw in the end enough for us to stay second on the A-League table, but four points behind the Central Coast Mariners. We get just over £1 million for that, so to be fair, that's quite useful. Quite a big payday. It should mean, in theory, 
we'll find out if we do get Asian football in the save nice and early, because of course we should be based on that second place finish, but we'll see how that works with us being a team based in New Zealand. But of course we could offer contract perks regarding that. So we'll see how that does work out going into the second season of the save. Johnny Bazooka's injured, obviously that won't have too much impact. Not being selected currently for the national team striker is quite a strong point. But unfortunately, the Phoenix don't help us. The Central Coast are the champions in this first season of the save. And just going forward a few clicks off the back of that final game of our first season with AFC Auckland. And we have our transfer budget for the second season. It's quite a nice one, quite similar to what we had going into our inaugural season. 2.88 million, our wage budget at 76k per week. That means it's left over at 3.6 thousand. So we certainly can slide some of that over from the transfer budget into the wage budget again. But that is a decent amount of money to play with to hopefully strengthen up this team, start signing some players who can eventually become eligible for the New Zealand team, and hopefully next season go one better and lift the A-League. And going forward a few weeks off the back of getting our transfer budgets, and of course all those promotion relegation things having been finished for this Australian pyramid, we have now got an end of season review for our first season of this save in particular with AFC Auckland. Now this is going to be a bit messy, because of course everyone's a new arrival, we had no players, but apparently the signing of the season, not Gavin Tormin, despite the fact he has a ridiculous output of 22 goals and 5 assists. Instead, it's the cup goalkeeper who, to be fair, did a brilliant job for us later in the season. And Stefan Marinovic, he gets the signing of the season, which does seem a little bit weird to be fair, free transfer for a player of his quality. I kind of get it, but at 32 years old, thought we signed some better players than that here at AFC Auckland, but to be fair, those top six in particular did a brilliant job for us, albeit Bruce Azumi, not much game time once he did join after he turned 18 years old, but obviously really good first season for us in this save, sets us up nicely now to be established in the A-League at least, and hopefully push on a bit sooner than expected to try and do some more build a nation things, obviously not much use in looking at the loans out in our first season. Of the save, the competitions, the A-League did a lot better than expected, finishing second, but in the end, we lost both times to the Central Coast Mariners. They were the team that finished above us on the table by four points. Also, that FMing by the Brisbane Roar, that definitely was costly, that 1-0 defeat at Mount Smart, but in the end, even if we won that one, still would have been one point behind the Central Coast needed to take some points off them. But those were our only three defeats in the A-League this season, a pretty good season. The only other rough patch that we did have was a couple of draws in a row in September, but to be fair, we were still getting used to what we were doing here at AFC Auckland. That is a very good first season, and as I said earlier, it will be interesting to see what happens in Season 2 if we do get some Asian continental football going down. It is Darwin, Redcliffe, and Canberra. They actually led the relegation playoff after the first leg, but then Adelaide and Nestor or Kunda bet them 4-0 in the second leg. They are going down to the second division. We'll reveal who's coming up shortly once we look at the results from that league. The Australian League Cup this season was not very good. Got knocked out on penalties by Evandale FC. That was a bit of an ugly game. Hopefully next season we can do a bit better and maybe pick up our first trophy here at AFC Auckland in the Cup might also be taking part as well in the Australian Cup next season, the Australian version of the FA Cup. Biggest win, 4-0 over the Darwin Cyclones, to be fair, beat a couple of teams by that scoreline. The match to remember was our very first one, a 1-0 win away at Western United, and the goal of the season, it came in a 4-1 win at Redcliffe, and it was scored late by Louis Toomey. And here is the goal, just as we're about to enter injury time in this one. Have the ball just outside the box. Sullivan back for Toomey. First time finish. It was a pretty good strike. I do think it's up there in terms of goal of the season candidates. And that is the one that wins at that last goal in that 4-1 win over Redcliffe. Scored by the Oceania Footballer of the Year for 2023. The finances, not very interesting with this being our first season. And apparently... No shirt sellers who we can look at either, which is not ideal. How we lined up, to be fair, that looks like our first choice 11 for most of the season up until Scott Basilage got injured late and got replaced by Stefan Marinovic. And from that point, 
pretty much impossible to drop him with the form that he was in. But the back four, Cullen Elliott, Adam Mitchell, Winston Reid, and Michael Neal. He definitely got that starting spot over Nathan Lobo throughout the season. The midfield, Oxburgh and Sullivan, the two Aussies were solid, albeit Sullivan was out for quite a decent chunk of the season, which is not ideal, albeit it did allow Taylor Tamer to develop a little bit. In that backup role, Jack Henry Sinclair at right wing, Stefan Malk in the cam, and of course, Gavin Tormine out on the left wing, and Gianni Bazookas up front in the end just felt like he was a little bit better than Hassan Jello in that striking role, going forward to the accolades, and this time, Gravine Tormine does pick something up, the fans player of the season, obviously with those 22 goals and those five assists, he was going to be a leading candidate, the young player of the season was Cullen Elliott, you saw signing of the season and goal of the season before, top goal scorer was Tormine, most assists Elliott, the most player of the matches Tormine with six, highest average rating Tormine, and of course because of that, he sets a lot of the record to be broken down that right hand side, also in amongst those, uh, Elliot Basilage, more Tormine, Mitchell picked up a lot of yellow cards, that's why he was suspended during yesterday's episode, most appearances this season was actually from Mitch Oxborough, which is a little bit surprising, he played in every single game, and there's some more down there, youngest player Azumi, oldest player Winston, the fastest goal Tormine, and Azumi and Reed also picked up goals, so they are the youngest and the oldest goal scorer. Competition awards, as I said earlier, Louis Toomey did pick up the Oceania Footballer of the Year for 2023, albeit that was mostly through his National League efforts. When with Eastern Suburbs, I believe it wasn't going forward to history in the making. Apparently, our late season form got us up the table. I thought it was our mid-season form, honestly. And going forward to the manager timeline, we'll see if this is any interest at all. Here you can see we became the manager of both Auckland and New Zealand at the same time. Got a couple of of young players who, to be fair, still need to join us because they're not 18 yet. Also got some staff in, signed some players on the cheap. All-time low, apparently, when we sank down to 103rd with the All-Whites. Off the back of that, though, that very good first win in the New Zealand derby, two late goals to beat the Phoenix 3-2. Started to put together some wins and also in early January agreed to sign Alex Paulson on a free for next season. It does mean that probably one of Marinovic or Basilage We'll need to leave in this upcoming off-season. And to be fair on late-season form, that's a bit more difficult of a decision than I thought it was going to be about halfway through that past season. Also a late goal there from the spot to keep us alive in that title race with that 2-1 win over Perth before, unfortunately, the Phoenix could not help us on that final day of the season. Tormine broke the record for most goals, obviously. First season of the save. Then some weird ones. Can't score, won't score with 70 goals in a season. I think that record will get broken at some stage because that is a pretty high mark for a 30-game season. Also, apparently, a pretty full 67 points. We finished second, and also, it was a record points haul. So those last couple are a little bit weird, but there's our dynamic manager timeline for the first season of the Save Our End of Season Review, and that will do it pretty much for today's episode, unfortunately, could not quite get the job done and knock off the Central Coast as A-League champions, but we do have a decent transfer budget. Try and turn that around in the second season of the save, albeit before then, we do have the matter of some international football at the start of next week, and that is the OFC Nations Cup with the All Whites. We won't show you all of that, so it should be a tournament which we should be winning, but we might come back and do an episode focused on either the final and or the semi-final of that competition while I sort out the transfers going into that second season of life with AFC Auckland, our group, this tournament being hosted at home, which does help us a lot. Solomon Islands, New Caledonia, and Tahiti. I think our toughest game is first up when we do take on the Solomon Islands, but you'd like to think this is a tournament we can get through nice and smoothly and hopefully establish some dominance before we take some of these teams on yet again about a year from this time when we do our World Cup qualifying here for Oceania and hopefully can make our way to the World Cup for the first time in a little while with this All-Whites team. And in terms of the team we are taking to the OFC Nations Cup, this is what we are going with. Just sort this out by position to be fair. It's the team we've been selecting for the most part recently. A couple of new players in there though. Mali Luluai is a very promising player who is at Burnley. He comes in because unfortunately another promising player who's at Reading 
who has a really, really long name. Need to just find him here and bring him up. And there he is, Jacob Hammond Chambers Borgness. That's an absolute mouthful. He's been picked the last couple of windows as a backup defensive midfield option, but unfortunately just injured for long enough that it's going to be a bit iffy if he can feature for most of the OFC Nations Cups because of that we've left him out for this competition. He'll certainly get back in there at some stage. Young Mali Luai can come in instead, and it does mean that Bill Tuiloma might be asked to be a midfielder as well as a centre-back for this upcoming tournament. Also, Stefan Marinovic comes in over young Henry Gray from Ipswich Town based on his late season form. And to be fair, we weren't playing the young goalkeeper anyway, so may as well pick Marinovic. But apart from that, this is the team we've been picking for a little while now. They should be able to get the job done at the OFC Nations Cup coming up at the start of next week. But that will do it for this first season of the save with AFC Auckland. If you enjoyed it, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up. On the video and if you haven't done so already and did enjoy that first season of the save also make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn the notification bell on as well so you are informed when the second season does start as well as this OFC Nations Cup with the All Whites but until the start of next week for that and also hopefully a bit of transfer activity to try and strengthen us to be big contenders for that A-League title next season with AFC Auckland. Thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on and I'll see you then. Cheers. Oh,